Hey guys, KingBar06 here and back with another video. As you guys may be able to tell, my general style of video making is different. First of all, this is my first scripted video and what you are currently seeing on the screen is sort of a visual schedule of what's to come on the channel. The reason I haven't been uploading is because I've been busy with these four artworks. I've decided to start making batches of speed paint so I can spend more time on other projects such as versus battles for mostly anime, animations, and possibly some real life stuff with things such as tech decks or potentially basketball. Who knows? Anything is possible with this new setup. I Ideally, this will be now. I will come out with at least one video every week, and the video that doesn't come out on the Friday will be a bonus video that I was able to finish between the weekly speed paints. With that out of the way, we will start with the Toro speed paint. This video will cover a few categories. I should have the chapters for this video and the timestamps in the description. I will talk about my opinions on Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, my favorite character uh, from the series, my opinions on Toro, and any extra thoughts I have on the series or any specific characters. If any specific category doesn't make it in the video, this is because I may have written too much for one specific section. If that's the case, we'll either cover it in the next video or I will scrap it. Spoiler alert! If you haven't seen Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid and you're interested in the series at all, do not continue to listen to my commentary and either mute the video or leave now. Out of all the slice of life of anime that I've seen, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is by far the funniest one I've seen. I found myself actually laughing out loud numerous times throughout the series. What I believe made the series as comical as it was has to do with the completely oblivious Toro and the other dragons were to how human society works. One prime example is how uh, Toro and Connor were watching television and saw humans doing crazy things like cutting part of the planet and other miraculous feats of destruction. It's funny how Miss Kobayashi had to explain how that was all fictional and normal humans can't do anything of the sort. Two more comedic things that I'll mention is one, how he literally decided to turn Kobayashi into a guy, which is this is from episode one. She, um, now he, tried to hide it, failed, and when Toru stripped, Kobayashi was immediately turned off by the fact that she wasn't wearing her main outfit. Speaking of, Kobayashi and Makoto Takia, who is uh, one of her uh, good friends, actually her only friend from uh, prior to the start of the series, um, are both huge nerds when it comes to maids and maid outfits in general. That is something that comes up quite a bit in the series and I personally don't mind it. The other comedic scene that stands out to me and I even noted it down the episode in which it occurs is when Elma yells at, the, at two little kids for jaywalking and talks about punishing them severely. It cracks me up because of how seriously Elma takes an at most petty crime committed by two kids who really don't know better since they are kids. I commend Elma's English dub voice actress, which I just looked up writing the script, and her name is Rachel Glass. The way she was able to deliver such intense emotion, but at the same time, it wasn't so serious that it changed the mood of the scene. That was simply excellent. I appreciate delivery in that scene, and it added to my personal enjoyment of it. This series also had its fair share of emotional moments, one being the ending of the first season in which Toro's father, the Emperor Demise, comes to the human world to force Toro to come back to the dragon world. I should preface that dragons and humans normally live in different worlds. If you want to learn more about the lore of the series, simply watch it for yourself. Within this scene, the relationship between Toru and Kobayashi has proven to be a truly strong bond. Hence, Kobayashi goes out of her way to tell Toru's father that Toru is her maid and this is and this world is now her home. Toru is touched by this and decides to stand up for herself and fight against her father. Obviously, since they are dragons, they go to the dragon world to have this bout. Because they wouldn't want to destroy the human world, especially when the Emperor Demise made it clear that they're not dragons and humans are not allowed to like coexist. While they are blasting one another, Kobayashi has Kana fly her over and she tells the two to stop fighting amongst themselves. The Emperor Demise reluctantly quits the fighting, but he makes it abundantly clear that he will never accept Kobayashi or humans as a whole. Now, let me talk about Toru specifically. Is she my favorite character in the series? Maybe. As I mentioned before, there are quite a few moments in which I was laughing out loud, and from what I recall, Toru is at the center of most of those scenes. Now, when I say that maybe she's my favorite character, I don't have an official favorite as of writing the script, and but she would definitely, at minimum, be top three. Other people that I would consider would be Kana, Lukua, and possibly Yama. And also, uh, Miss Kobayashi herself, she is the main character, and I think she clearly has the most change and development as a character out of all the characters within the series, but generally that's how protagonists work in, in any sort of fiction. 
The reason I'm unsure of Elma specifically is because a lot of the scenes that she's in revolves around the fact that she loves food, especially sweets. Because of that, I would say that she has less personality in comparison to someone like Toru. But then again, Toru has the advantage of having significantly more screen time, especially considering the fact that she was introduced in episode 1. Someone like Emma was introduced in episode 8 of season 1, and she doesn't even appear in every episode after that point. There are some episodes that go over her past and her connections with Toru, but... I mean... And there's also the one scene where they both fight it out, and get their emotions out uh, via their fists but really that's like that's that's a small portion in terms of screen time and again you know, a lot of a lot of the care a lot of the things uh, within the series just focus on the comedic aspects of Elma which which is good and all but I, I think for someone who has such a connection to Toru she could have more depth it's funny how Toru talks about how humans are inferior and yet she goes out of her way to learn some of the things that humans uh, can do that she can't, such as magic uh, and bending a spoon. Miss Kobayashi shows what this, how to actually bend a spoon without using the overwhelming dragon strength that uh, characters like Toru, Kana, Lukua, Fafni, etc. That, that they all have. It's a, it's a simple application of physics. I've never personally tried to do any spoon bending, nor will I. Uh, this shows that um, Toru has a sort of a condescending attitude toward demons, but at the same time, she has a level of respect. This gives her a little bit of a mystery factor with her character because you never really know if her perception of humans really changes through her constant facade of the humans are inferior, dragons are better, etc. Toru, to me, stands out because of her constant changing attitude depending on the situation. A lot of her comedic moments come either from her brutal honesty or absolute obliviousness of what's going on around her or some aspect of human interaction that she clearly doesn't understand because she hasn't lived within human society for long enough to understand this. Honestly, with her character, I'd say her actions are a better description of who she really is, so check out the series if you're truly interested. As I explained in the last section, I don't have a set favorite character. After doing some thinking, I would say that Kobayashi is definitely up there because she probably has the most profound and upfront change within the series out of everyone. This is a given because she is the protagonist of the series, as I explained before. In comparison to the other characters, I would say that her own development as a character simply outshines everyone else. In fact, looking at character development alone, I'd say the only one who can compete is Toru. To be fair, Toru is essentially the Deuteragonist because she is second in importance to the series, just like how Killua is the Deuteragonist of Hunter x Hunter. People like Shota, Makoto, Fafnir, and Lukula say the same as characters. Once they're introduced, uh, they don't really have a profound change. Fafnir, now that I'm thinking about it, he does have uh, more of a change in comparison to the other three characters I just named. The main thing that changes within them is their circumstances and how they adapt to the subtle changes around them. So as of now, I'll settle with having Toru, Kobayashi, and Lukula in my top 3. Toru and Kobayashi are definitely above Lukula in my eyes, like a lot because most of all Lukula resides fan service for the audience and she doesn't have much beyond that. Her bubbly personality is good, but what does that really contribute to the series? Here are some of my extra thoughts about the series that didn't fit into the other three categories from the earlier points in the video. The relationship between Elulu and Takato Ida was quite interesting to see. Despite trying his best to hide it, uh, Take made it abundantly clear that he has a physical attraction to Elulu. I mean, honestly, it makes sense. She is attractive. Uh, what made uh, their interaction so hilarious is how much Elulu teased him and he tried everything in his power to resist, but it didn't even really work out for him. He's a very minor character within the series, and the main thing he does is teach Alulu how to work his grandma's shop. It's a good thing that Lulu came around because it's better to have a passion for your work than feel forced to do a specific job. Take wasn't really into running the shop, but Lulu loves to be around children, so it worked out for her. The relationship between Makoto and Fafnir was wholesome in such a bro-like way. I know that doesn't make sense, so I will elaborate. The two of them have a love for video games. When Fafnir first met Kobayashi, Makoto showed him a video game that involved fighting a dragon in a dungeon. That's ironic considering the fact that Fafnir is a dragon. And from that point, Fafnir was hooked. 
Since then, all that he does is play video games inside all day long or write his own novel slash manga that not a single person has purchased thus far because of how much it sucks. The way the two found a common interest and slowly started to bond with one another throughout the power of virtual reality was honestly quite touching. Despite the fact that Fafnir is heavily against humans, it seems that he has grown a strong connection with Makoto and even allows him to call him Fafkun. It was clear at that point in the series that Fafnir was changing for the better and I'm glad I was able to witness this for myself. This was one of the best um, relationship developments I've seen. Now that I think back to it, uh, I believe that the second best that was the second best relationship to develop within the series. The first obviously being between Kobayashi and Toru. Again, Kobayashi is the protagonist and Toru is the deuteragonist, so it's kind of a given. Um, but let me know what you guys think about uh, the relationship between Makoto and Fafnir, and then Toru and Kobayashi, Alukawa and Shota, uh, the slight relationship between uh, Makoto, Fafnir, and Shota, and really any other uh, relationships, uh, Takoto and Ilu. There are a lot of connections within the series, and that's honestly one of the things that I love about it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, check out my Twitter and Discord, both are in the description. If you want to know what I'm currently doing or thinking about, those two places are the best places to go. I will see you guys next time.